everyone, this is DWS Darius and welcome to the fish room. Today I want to give you guys a video on a Pacific fish that I just picked up. So within the past two weeks I picked up quite a few fish. I'll be revealing them throughout the weeks to come. But today I want to give you guys a look at this fish. This fish goes by a couple of names including the Silver Gar, the Hugeta Gar, the Rocket Gar, the Pike Charison, and the Freshwater Barracuda. This fish was an impulse buy. Originally I was online. I was looking at some of my older videos, I saw how awesome my silver arowana was, so I went and I bought another silver arowana, but then after talking to some people on Facebook, I realized that it wasn't really a good decision being that I didn't have my monster tank yet, because I do plan on making my own monster tank in the future, but um, I don't have it yet, so why buy the fish, because you never know what the future brings, so I went and canceled my order for the arowana, and instead I ended up getting this fish. So I did no research on this fish, which is highly not recommended. I just looked at a couple of pictures of Google, on Google. Um, after seeing how awesome this fish could look, I went and bought one. Um, the shipper I bought it from eBay shipped it so fast it came the next day. And when it arrived, I started to do some research and this is quite a fish. So once again, when I first bought this fish, I didn't do any research. So while the fish was acclimated once it arrived, I took that time to try to learn as much as I could about these fish. So these fish are not actual gars, they're charison. Some common charison are silver dollars and tetras, so they're more related to those fish than they are to gars. These fish come from Central and Upper South America. These fish can reach a foot in the wild, but in aquariums, they are rarely seen larger than 10 inches, which is pretty good, so they won't I won't have to worry about them outgrowing my 210 gallon aquarium. These fish as juvenile school, however as adults they will separate. So I was going to add a school of these fish because they would look awesome together, but I don't want them as adults fighting in a 210. And this little guy so far he's been with me a couple of days and he doesn't really seem stressed to be alone. So he's going to stay solo. So one of the things I was absolutely sure of is that this fish is a 100% predator fish. I mean, besides being named Freshwater Barracuda, the shape of this fish just says nothing but predator. Look how sharp his mouth is. Um, my camera really doesn't do good when it comes to close-ups, but this guy has like these two horns on the side of his mouth, which is good for clawing fish. Inside of his mouth, he has teeth. Um, just look at how slick his body is. He's so straight. You can tell that that means he has some quick speed to him. So he's an absolute predator. He spends his time at the top of the aquarium. So he's an ambush predator. He comes from above down. Um, and just definitely an awesome looking fish. Now that predator instinct does backfire because this fish is extremely picky. Once again, I've had him for a couple of days and he refuses everything. He refuses flakes, pellets, um, frozen foods, blood worms, you name it, he refuses it. I've even tried worms and you know, my second most pickiest fish, my tiger dadnoid, he loves worms. This fish will not even eat worms. He only wants fish. Um, just to make sure he was eating, I took a few, a few platies out of my community tank and I tossed him in here and this fish just came alive. The hunt went on, he attacked them, he devoured them and it was crazy. I'm not gonna show it today because I kind of ran out of platies. I fed him my three smallest ones and I don't have any that's small enough for him. He's about four inches right now. But um, eventually when I restock on platies, I may do a video showing just how this fish hunts. But um, yeah, that's a problem. This fish wants nothing but live fish and that can become a headache. I don't want to have to go to the store every day because usually these fish build an appetite every day. Of course, you don't have to feed them every day, but when your fish is bagging, it's hard to resist. So I know that's going to be a problem. I'm going to try my best to get them on floating sticks and stuff like that. But based on everybody that kept this fish before, it will not be easy. And so I guess that's going to be my number one challenge with this fish. Another thing I've noticed about this fish is just the boldness of this fish. I think this comes from being such a confident hunter, this boldness. I remember when I first had my silver arowana, if I came too close, he was jumping and just all afraid of me, always trying to hide from me. The same with my Jardini arowana. This guy, I could come tap the glass, look at that. He backed away a little bit, but 
Compared to my arowana, definitely a lot more bold. And look at that, he's still coming back towards me. So definitely a bold fish. I think that boldness is once again fueled by his just predator instinct. He's so confident in his predatorial skills that it just brings this boldness. That's a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because I don't have to worry about him hiding. It's bad because I know once he get bigger, once I start to do water changes, he will go for my fingers. Okay everyone, so now I just want to give you guys a finale of this fish, give you my last thoughts and some of my plans for this fish. So, so far I am very pleased with this fish, it's a very entertaining fish. I hate the fact that he only wants live foods, that's going to be very challenging when it comes to feeding him. I also hate the fact that, I forgot to mention that he's a very slow grower. Um, one person said they had one and in about 8 months it only grew 1 inch, so that means if this guy grows that slow, it'll take him a couple of years before he's able to go upstairs which hopefully that's not the case. But yeah, when he does reach a decent size, right now, once again, he's about four inches. I say when he's about six to seven inches and a little bit more thicker, I will add him to the 210 gallon aquarium up there. Um, eventually, hopefully then I can have in my other tank while we'll take out my peacock bass and some of my other cichlids. Then I have this guy up there with some smaller cichlids. And I think it will be really cool when I consider just how bold he is, how he don't mind people coming in front of the glass. I think he'll be a really good show fish and um, will look awesome. So I'm not going to do like back to back videos on this fish. Hopefully the next time I show you guys this fish, you'll have some size. But once again, these fish are slow growers. So that means the next time I show this fish may be a while from now. But YouTube, let me know what you think about this fish. It was an impulse buy, so I really didn't do a lot of research behind it. Um, yeah, I just want to hear your thoughts about it. So far, I'm loving just the entertainment of this fish. I love how he swims, how he has such boldness in his swim. Um, I know some of you guys might not like this, but I like the way he hunts. One day I'm going to post a video. If you don't like hunting videos, then you might not want to watch that video. But I'm going to show how he hunts um, fish. It's just absolutely amazing. If you ever saw a pike, um, the northern pike, I saw a documentary just the other day. This fish is very similar when it comes to hunting. I'll post that video when I get the chance. But yeah, this is the latest fish added to the fish room. Once again, I added a few other fish and some of the other aquariums, and I'll be revealed those later on. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss those updates. But yeah, this is a look at the freshwater barracuda, the Hugeta Gar. And that's going to be it for today. See you all later.